What we're finding out from this video, this camera that was posted on a building just across the street from where the crash happened, you don't actually see the crash, you don't see the car, but do you see that? The light post uh, falling and, and, and the tree, and then you see this debris go. All right, count 60 seconds from that point, and it's not until there that you see any significant smoke. There's a wisp of smoke there, but, uh, and, and I'm not sure how this is edited, but the smoke is very light for 60 seconds. What that suggests is that the fire did not become uh, a, a raging fire for about a minute, which would mean that the two occupants in the vehicle would have had 60 seconds uh, to get out, if they could have. Um, we don't know what happened. Nobody saw what they were trying to do at that time, but it was a full 60 seconds until what you see now, the, the full heavier black smoke, smoke going. Right, I believe this is edited. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, if we saw the red... It is edited. Uh, the, the, I'm hearing in my ear video. from the control room. Right. Yes, Alan Duke, it's edited. So you're what, telling what, me you what, saw the raw in 60 seconds Well, uh, after this light pole goes down, that's when the smoke begins, correct? What, what's more, having been there that, that, that evening and seeing the scene and standing actually right at those hedges looking down as the coroner pulled the bodies from the wreckage, I can oh. tell you the significance is the 60 seconds that you don't see smoke because... What was happening then, that is the horror that Paul Walker and Roger Rodas were suffering. They oh. were, at that time, all right, let's watch it again. You, the, the light post, you see it just goes down. That is real time there. Now, again, the edited, that smoke, that edit leaves out a 60-second gap there. If we would see the 60 seconds, we see horror below those hedges because those men obviously would have been trying to get out and nobody was there outside to help them. It wasn't until the flames were rising and the smoke was above those hedges that you're looking at now, about two minutes later, that anyone arrived with a fire extinguisher or to try to help them. We've heard of heroic efforts to try to pull the men out, but it was too late because their friends were at that charity event at Rodas's car shop about 500 yards away when they heard the crash. They rushed up. It was a couple of or three minutes before they got there. By the time they got there, that's what the smoke looked like right there. But it's that lonely 60 seconds of no smoke, no fire in that Porsche Carrera GT when those men were inside that vehicle, obviously unable to get out. Yep. We'll hear that this afternoon from the coroner. No, we'll I was hear this also, afternoon from the coroner. Sorry, I was going to tell you that we'll get preliminary autopsy results perhaps within a couple of hours from the coroner. Talked to the coroner investigator uh, a short time ago. Uh, we should have the positive identification. Now, mm -hmm. everything is presumed that it was Roger Rodas and Paul Walker in the car. And it is also presumed based on witness statements that Rodas was behind the wheel because that's how they were when they left the shop minutes earlier. However, what we don't really know, did they switch seats? Was Walker driving? We don't have any reason to believe that they did, but we don't know if they didn't. So the coroner will be able to verify that for us this afternoon. And also, in fact, if they survived the collision to be able to try to get out for those 60 long seconds before we see the giant plume of smoke. Alan Duke, thank you so much for getting us this new surveillance video. Um, just terrific images to, to watch.